Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about my unpopular opinions about Eurovision 2024. It can be about different songs that I think are overrated or underrated or I found songs that I think will flop or do better than expected, but also about the host country Sweden and the EBU and also about like the voting procedure, etc, etc. So it will be a little bit of everything um, that I will talk about in this video. And quick disclaimer, this is just my personal opinion. I don't expect that you agree with all that I have to say today, because if you did, then you know what's the point of Eurovision, you know? Um, Eurovision is basically just opinions about songs and we can't all agree and that is so very okay. I did ask you guys on my YouTube channel um, and in, a, in, a, in a post what you, some of your unpopular opinions about Eurovision 2024 is, so I will be including some of them along in the video uh, when they are relevant. But without much further time, let's just get a hit with this video. Number one. France is underrated and could win Eurovision 2024. So, France is criminally underrated. I feel like in the Eurovision community, there is not that much love for France, and I feel like they need so much more love. And I can see on the post that I made that multiple people have commented that France is underrated and that they're really a dark horse to take the victory. I really believe that they have a solid chance to win in Malmö. When I look at the odds, they have been climbing a little bit recently. They're now up to number 7 in the odds, which is obviously, like, alright. But if we go but just a little bit back, they were 13th um, in late February. And they have been constantly on, like, ninth place for a long time. This is a song that is, like, top 5 for sure. Number 2. The jury should have 50% of the vote in the semifinals. So, I know that this change was obviously introduced. Um, last year, where it was 100% televote in the semifinals, which was, well, I didn't hate it. I think it was a somewhat good idea, and I still don't hate it. I think that the idea of it is really, really nice, but I think that we have kind of seen already more entries kind of targeted towards, like, being upbeat and being very, like, televote targeted, because I feel like countries are maybe just looking to get to the final, because... To get, to get to the final is a goal for a lot of countries, that is really what they strive for every year. So I feel like a lot of countries are trying to send songs that can just get to the final by being very, very, very televote friendly. But also maybe there is, they don't have the jury potential and also they're kind of losing a little bit of the quality in the same process. So I would love to keep this like 100% televote in the semifinals, but I just feel like you know, we need to give it a few more years. But if things are, are evolving more into this like televote targeted songs. I feel like we need to look at this again and see how can we fix this. But obviously there were some issues with the jury, so I don't think that bringing the juries back in their original form in the semifinals would be a good idea. I think that there would uh, be needed to make some changes to them as well, because obviously we can't have corrupt juries who are voting for each other. I'm looking at some certain countries that you all know about. We don't need to address them here, but we obviously don't need that. Number three. Georgia will likely not qualify for the grand final for the eighth time in a row. Yes, this is extremely sad. In my prediction video for the second semifinal, I have Georgia just on the qualification. Like, I feel like they're just gonna get through. But I also had them just gonna get through last year. And I feel like Georgia manages to just screw things up every freaking year. Even when they have songs that are actually decent, then their staging is flopping or the vocal is flopping or something is just not the way it needs to be. I would love to see Nutsa Buzalatsa go through to the final, like really, I, for all the countries that have a really hard time with qualifications, so like Georgia, Latvia, Denmark, like some of the countries, Ireland, some of the countries that have really, really been struggling in recent years, I just want to see all of them go through, to be honest, but I don't know, something in my stomach is just telling me that this is not going to go through after all, that there's I don't know. It's going to be exciting, but I, I, I really, really hope Georgia can go through. But something is just telling me that they're probably not going to make it. Number four. Switzerland should win Eurovision 2024. So, I'm not sure how unpopular of an opinion this is. I can obviously see there's a lot of love for Switzerland um, around in the community. So, this may not be a very unpopular opinion, but I guess that there are more people who disagree with me than who agrees with me, so that way you can kind of call it an unpopular opinion. Switzerland is my number one, and I'm absolutely in love with the song, and in love with Nemo. I think they're an incredible person, and they have such a fun and bubbly personality, and I love the song, the message, and everything behind it, and I have heard 
um, the staging and um, it seems like the staging is going to be pretty pretty incredible um, so I'm in really really high hopes for that so I can't wait to see the rehearsals um, I have gained um, online press accreditation which is very cool so I'm very very excited for that because obviously yeah I really believe Switzerland has a chance to win and I really think that feel like they should win I feel like this is the right now the song with the best package but this is quite just what I think uh, but there are a lot of people who agree with me I think Switzerland is a very, very good song but there are definitely also people who think Switzerland is underrated and do not agree with my opinion about the song number five to open the voting at the beginning of the grand final is the best decision made by the EBU in many years so I have seen a lot of mixed emotions uh, and feelings about this change that the EBU has now introduced where basically the voting will be starting right like when the first um, form uh, performance is getting performed and I'm loving it I think it's amazing incredible it's definitely the right decision to do like in most TV shows in Denmark and I don't know how it is in other countries but I'm assuming it's similar but at least in most um, shows in Denmark where I live for instance Dance with Du Compris etc etc you can vote at the beginning of the show like right when you have seen the performance you can vote for the song if you want to vote for it so Rio Vision is very unique in the way that you cannot vote until all the 26 participants have performed if it's in the final or um, after the 15th, 16th, 17th or 18th or whatever if it's in the semi-final but in the grand final when there's 26 songs and you're performed as number two your chance of getting remembered are just close to zero especially if you have a song that might not be the most memorable after all I just feel like to open the voting at the beginning of the show really just helps even out this advantage of being late in the running order I still think that being late in the running order is an advantage but I do think that with this like addition to the voting where you can vote from the beginning I think that the running order like you know advantages are kind of evened out a little bit more and I feel like it's more fair for countries going early on the running order because yeah I just feel like it's more fair because you can now vote for the country right when you have heard it if you want to vote for it and see it um, win the competition so I feel like it's just more fair that way number six Poland will be the big surprise of Eurovision 2024 and finish on the left side of the scoreboard. Poland is going to qualify for sure. Like, people who say this is not going to qualify, guys, I'm sorry, it's going to qualify. Okay, let's not discuss that. They have such a big task for voting and they have only once not been in the top 10 with a televote since 2016. And that was in 2021 where they had that very, not very good song. Uh, it was actually extremely bad. So, yeah. You know, Poland are going to go through, okay? Let's not discuss that. And I think that they're going to surprise a lot of people. I think the song is just a song that is going to appeal to many regular viewers, but may not be something that really, like, um, lights the fire in the Eurovision community. But you know, that's okay. You don't have to do that. You need to appeal to the general audience because, after all, the Eurovision community makes up a really, really small part of everyone who are Eurovision every year. Number seven, semifinal one and two are equally strong. I've seen mixed emotions about this. I mean, I've seen that a lot of people are saying that initially semifinal one was the stronger one, but now people are like semifinal two is the stronger one. And I feel like there are a lot of different opinions as to which one is really the strongest semifinal right now. But the way I'm seeing it is actually that they're equally strong uh, or equally weak, depending on how you look at it, I guess. Um, I went down on my like um, top list. I just went down and I was like, okay, if I had to pick you know, the 20 finalists to go to the final, if we're taking the big five plus Sweden and putting them to the side, and if I had to go down and pick the my top 20 and advance them to the final, I actually found out that I had chosen exactly 10 from each semifinal in my top 20, if you exclude the big five plus Sweden, which I thought was really, really cool. So actually, in theory, my, my the 20 songs, you know, like, they could advance to the final and um, I don't have like 12 from one semi-final and 8 from the other etc etc it's like 10 10 um, in my top 20 if you exclude uh, the big five in Sweden so I think that they're very, very equally strong I feel like maybe semi-final two is a bit more open where I feel like semi-final one is a bit more like I feel like there is maybe just one or two spots that they can actually be fought about where I feel like semi-final two is way more open but I think that they're actually equally strong number eight Luxembourg's entry is heavily underrated this is so underrated I, I don't know if I saw any comments um who agreed with me I actually don't think I did let me just go to the Eurasian arts they're currently number 
35. 35. This song is so good. I want a quick to win in the Luxembourg National Selection, but this song is so good as well. And Tali sings great and she's a great performer and she has great energy and the song is not too basic. It's like, I'm very, very baffled about this. Like it's very, very, like 35th. 35th is, I think, the most underrated song of your origin 2024. It's a crime. I, I'm really, really, really shocked. And also on the Eurasian school, but at their quite low. I'm just very confused. I think the song is so great, and I really believe that they will advance to the fire. They have a great running on the spot. The song is upbeat, fun. Luxembourg is coming back. I don't know. I don't know why people are not getting the song, but I'm really getting it. And I am confused. I loved this entry. Number nine. The most likely winner as of right now is Italy. So I think that there are. Well, I think to this, there's a good comment uh, who, there's a good comment that I saw under my post who said that basically uh, this one from user something, we never had so many potential winners. And I agree with that. I think that is a, I don't think it's an unpopular opinion necessarily, but I do agree with that. And I do think the most potential, like the most likely one is Italy, but I do agree that there's actually many with the potential and they're really like neck and neck. I think Switzerland has good potential, France, Croatia, Netherlands, Ukraine. There are a lot of songs with potential to actually win, but if I had to look at the song that is most likely to win, I would actually say that it is Italy. Italy is, has historically been doing very well in the competition and I could see the song being top three in both the televote and jury, and that could secure it its victory. A lot of people are agreeing with me, but a lot of people are also disagreeing. A lot of people really feel like Italy is overrated, um, which is definitely something that I think that when you're like a favorite to win, a lot of people are gonna see as overrated, but there are definitely a lot of people who are thinking that Italy is overrated, which is totally fair as well. Number 10, the Netherlands is very, very overrated. This is number five in the odds and number six on the Eurasian scoreboard app. This is way too high. And I can see that a lot of people are agreeing with me uh, under the post that I posted on my U U YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. I think that the reason why this song has been so hyped is really because Joost Klein is obviously like pretty known in the Netherlands. And this song has been a pretty big, big hit in the Netherlands and like Belgium as well, actually, um, and, and has gained a ton of streams in the Netherlands and, and Belgium and yeah, a lot of people are now betting on this song of course because of the huge success that it has gained on this streaming in the Netherlands but this is also kind of misleading because just because a song does very well in your country doesn't necessarily mean that it will do extremely well at Eurasian, you know what I mean? But yeah, when you bet on a country to win a competition, a lot of people bet on that country, you are gonna rise in the odds, um, or, like to the top. And I saw a little graph where actually you can see that the Netherlands is the song that the most people are actually betting on currently to win Eurovision. More people than bet on Croatia or Ukraine or Italy. Actually, the most people who are betting on, on, on a country are actually betting on the Netherlands to win, which is also a big part of why they're jumping off to where they are because bookmakers need to make money. They cannot afford to lose much money. So when a lot of people are betting on a country, that country will automatically, you know, rise. I do think that the chorus is quite catchy and quite infectious, but I'm not a big fan of this of the of the verse of the song. I think this could to me this would be like a 20 20 20 second finish for them is what I think is appropriate, but this is definitely going to be much higher. But I do think this is very very overrated. I do think that when a song is gaining a lot of momentum like in the us and stuff like that, then I feel like people's opinion about the song also automatically change. <laughs> The shade, the shade of it all. <laughs> like, you can see how it has just been moving up the Eurasian scoreboard along the odds, which I find very, very strange how people are then like changing their opinions. But nonetheless, I think this song is overrated, though I don't think it's a bad song necessarily. Number 11, the big five should not be able to perform their song in the semi finals. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna divide this into two parts. First, okay. I don't like how they need to perform in the semifinals. They already get this pass by to the final, and I feel like that is enough for them. I feel like what we have currently, where they kind of like talk with them for like a minute and like show a little bit of the performance is a very fine and nice way to do it. I have nothing against that. I think that's pretty fine. I think it's all right, but I don't like how they need to perform. And even if we then said, okay, they can perform, 
then why the hell are you gonna mix them in with the people who are actually performing to qualify? Yeah, please. That makes no sense. It makes zero sense to me. You're gonna watch like three performances and then comes a country that is already through. Like that is just gonna confuse so many people. I can see that just being so confusing. It doesn't make sense. Like what the hell? So if they are to do it, then you should do it at the end. But I would rather that they not do it and just stick with what they have been doing for the last years. Number 12, Croatia should not win Eurovision 2024. So I can see that a lot of people are agreeing with me that Croatia should not win or that it's overrated. I don't necessarily think that it's very overrated. Um, I actually don't, but I can see that some people are thinking that. I don't think it's overrated. I do think this is a really, really great song that deserves a top, like, three finish for sure. I do think that they actually deserve that. I just want Switzerland to win. I think Switzerland's the better. And I do think that we need a stronger goal coup from Baby Lasagna in order for him to be a winner of Eurovision 2024. So this is not me feeling saying that Croatia is overrated. It's just saying that according to me, I don't think this is the winner. I think that, um, and a lot of people also, I can see some, some people said that it, this doesn't have winning potential. And winner vibes um and to me i agree this doesn't have winner vibes for me the winner vibes are for switzerland number 13 the revamped version of albania's song is better than the original one but the new version actually harmed its chances of qualification so i think that from what i can see most people are saying that the revamp is a downgrade which I don't, dis I don't agree with. I, I didn't like the original one. It was like my second to last place. I thought it was really bad. It was just very bland, very middle of the road. And I do think that the, the change um, is better. I do prefer the new version. But with that being said, when you change your song into English and you make it more westernized, I do think that their chances of qualification kind of lowers because you kind of you kind of get into a fight with a lot of other songs that are very similar in uh, in this like western modern pop genre whereas if they stick with what they had they would be very like on their own very unique so they could really target a specific group of people who are really into this type of music so while i actually think that the new version is better i do think that their chance of qualification are actually now smaller so it's a little bit paradoxical number 14 ramonda is the best serbian entry since molitva this is such a good song. I'm absolutely in love with the Serbian entry. I do see a lot of love for Serbia this year, but I also see a lot of people who think it's very like overrated. I think it's a very mixed bunch. But I'm actually gonna go as far to say that this is maybe the best or like the top three best Serbian entries ever. I think it's absolutely incredible. Teodora is absolutely an icon. She's just so good. And yes, I think this is better than Constracta and Coprozano. I think it's better than Luke Black. I think it's better than Hurricane. I think this is better than all those songs. Um, I think this is the best entry since Molitva. Number 15, Greece will flop at Eurovision 2024. This will qualify. Don't get me wrong. Greece will qualify. Greece is my 11th place. I like the song a lot. But I think that Greece won't qualify. When I, when I say that Greece will flop, I think that people are expecting this to be at least top 10 and leaning towards top 5. I don't think it's going to do that. I think this is gonna be top right side of the scoreboard around like 14th place. Um, I could see it doing something like Blanca Paloma placing, maybe a little bit higher, but yeah. Um, I love the song. I think it's great. It's my little place, as I said. I just think that it will not do as well as people are expecting. Number 16. We have too many upbeat songs. I need more ballads this year. So I know this might be controversial, but I'm just someone who loves ballads. And I feel like this year we have so many loud and upbeat entries that I feel like we just need some more ballads in between to kind of just, I don't know, make it a little bit more even. I don't know. It's just... I feel like we need more slow songs and more ballads. And I know that a lot of people are gonna be like, oh no, we love how there's so many upbeat songs. And I do maybe think that one of the reasons all these upbeat songs are the change in the semi-final, because obviously slower songs generally get less televotes than people or songs um, that are up-tempo. Not always, you know, but, but generally speaking. But yeah, I just think that we need more ballads this year, but that's, again, just a very personal preference, and I don't think a lot of people are agreeing with that. But that's just what I think. Number 17, Jayco is one of the weakest Armenian entries ever. 
yes, ever, or in a long time. I don't really like this song. Um, when I reacted to the song, I actually said that, oh, it's, it's nice, it's cultural, it's different. And I agree, I stand by what I said 100%. But I also said that after it finished, I felt so empty. I just felt like I needed more, that something was missing. And we had like 30, 40 seconds that they were not using. I kind of had the feeling of like, yes, and <laughs> like, the yeah, this feeling of like emptiness and feeling like something is needed that I just didn't get really. Um, yeah, I think this is one of the weakest entries in a pretty long time. Um, I'm, I don't like the song that much and I don't think that it deserves to qualify. Number 18. Ukraine deserves to be number four in the odds to win the Eurovision 2024. Obviously, Ukraine are higher in the odds than they would probably be uh, under normal circumstances due to, you know, unfortunate events going on in the world. But I actually do think that their song is so amazing and actually deserves the placing that it has. Um, I actually wrote this, um, like, bullet down when they were number two in the odds. And I, and I even agree with the number two placing in the odds. And I still... I still just think they deserve to be number two if they were to go to number two again, but I also think that they deserve to be number four where they are right now. This is a really, really good song. It's just quality. Ukraine really knows how to bring it. Uh, and I see a lot of people just really calling out Ukraine and saying, oh, it's all about the war, which I, I yes, there are some about the war, which goes into why they are a place where they are. But I actually do think this song is incredible and much better than the winning entry 2022. And I actually do think that they deserve their current, like, placing in the, in the art. Number 19. The winner of Eurovision 2024 will not win the televote or the jury vote. Okay, this might be... I don't know. I don't know if this is controversial. I don't think this is, like, super controversial. I think this is more like a prediction. I just can really see this happening this year. I can really see a 2019 scenario or 2000 and 16 scenarios, so 16 scenarios, obviously, uh, Ukraine getting second and second, and 2019 is, of course, Netherlands getting third and second. I could see one of those things pan out, and I could see that the people who could come out victorious in the end, in one of these scenarios, are Italy and Switzerland. I could see Switzerland doing a 3-2 or a 2-2, uh, and I could see um, Italy doing the exact same thing. I don't see... Croatia doing that. I think Croatia, if they want to win Eurovision, they need to win the televote and they need to win it with a big margin down to the, 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 the jury winner. But yeah, I, I just, I think that we're going to get a 2019 or 2016 situation this year, which is very, very, it means it can be very, very unpredictable, which could be interesting. And last but not least, Netherlands, Estonia, and Finland could ruin Croatia's chances at winning Eurovision 2024. I love Croatia. Croatia is my number eight currently. This could go higher, it can also go lower, depending on, you know, how everything will pan out. There are just a lot of, like, upbeat songs this year, and a lot of these, like, very um, noisy entries, I guess you can call them. We have Croatia, Finland, Estonia, Netherlands, etc., etc., they're fighting for a lot of the same points, I think. So I could really, I could see Netherlands, especially Netherlands, stealing a lot of points that Croatia needs to win, if you know what I mean. So I feel like, yeah, their chances of winning are smaller because these countries are in the final, um, it, as, as, as opposed to if they were not, you know? Like, for Croatia, if Netherlands were to shock and qualify, it would be amazing for them because that would make their chances of winning greater. I don't think that this will be the deciding factor. I only think that this is going to come into play if it's very, very close. Like if Croatia lose with like 20 points to Italy or Switzerland or someone else, then I think we can talk about how potentially these countries ruin their chances. But if they lose with more, it's not going to be like it was because of them. You know what I mean? But this is going to be able to make a difference, I guess, with some points. Um, so it could, if it's going to be close, which we're expecting this year, it could make a difference. 
But that was my 20 unpopular opinions about Eurovision 2024. I know some of them were probably very unpopular, some of them were probably not that unpopular, but I think it was a good mix. Um, but yeah, that's just what I think. Please let me know down in the comments below what are your unpopular opinions about Eurovision 2024. I'm really, really excited to hear what you guys think. And as always, you should have a blessed until I see you next time. Bye-bye.